Scatia is a 3D modeling software which can be employed in various domains and having a firm grip on the software can help you to get more and more opportunities in the modeling and designing sector. The reason can be that it is one of the most leading 3D modeling software available around the globe as it offers even the advanced features you might not even think about. So don't you want to know what exactly it is and how to start with the basics of CATIA? I am Tony Tom and that's exactly what I am aiming to do. Let's get going. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on this video any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello learners, welcome to this course on CATIA. As we all know, CATIA is actually a 3D modeling software. We'll be able to design and we'll be able to get that particular design into reality using the software CATIA. So not just by building and seeing whether that particular product is actually feasible in order to use, we'll be able to design that thing virtually using the software CATIA and then directly implement those designs by using the software CATIA. So that is what we will be able to get. So we'll be able to design any object, any particular product or any particular item using this particular software. And it is completely easy for you to understand the basics so that you'll be able to become a pro very easily. And that's exactly what I am trying to do here. So this course is completely for beginners where you actually have the desire to design and you know become a pro in this area so if you're having that you know starting trouble this is the perfect course for you where i am going to be dealing with all the basic tools all the basic options and formulas which are available to you so that you can become a pro in designing especially on the software academy so let's go on and see what is the agenda or what are the topics that we are going to be covering in this particular course on CADIA. Yeah. starting with we'll be understanding more on CADIA. Yeah. What is CATIA? So just by knowing to design is not enough. So you need to be knowing what the software actually is. CATIA, what is CATIA? How will we be able to design? What are the domains in which these softwares are being used? So all those things are being dealt here, which is the industry which is inculcating more on CATIA. And what is the job opportunity? All those things can be dealt to you in the first particular topic, that is what is CATIA? We'll be completely understanding on CATIA very much detail. Next, we'll be moving on to the software, that is CATIA. By the software, we'll be understanding the graphical user interface. Just by opening the software, we'll be, you know, given the screen and what are the options available there. So what are the tool sets available there? Where will we be able to get the options and what are the functions of that particular options as well? So we'll be, you know, getting used or getting familiarized with the software and how the software actually looks when we open the software. And next, we'll be moving on to understanding studio sketching toolboxes. So as I said before, 3D modeling, 2D and 3D comes, right? So without 2D modeling, you will not be able to create any 3D models. So you need to be creating 2D sketches. So in order to create 2D sketches, you need to be knowing 2D sketching toolboxes. So what are the toolboxes available? Which all toolboxes are there in order to design 2D sketches? So by using all these toolboxes, what is the benefit? What is the advantage of using these toolboxes? Or what are the uses of these toolboxes? So we'll be understanding all the toolboxes initially. And then after understanding the 2D toolboxes, we'll be moving on to implement 2D sketching. So how 2D sketching can be done. So we'll be implementing some sketches in the 2D model or 2D area as well. And then we'll be going with the 3D modeling. So in order to move with 3D modeling, we need to be first understanding the 3D modeling or 3D sketching toolboxes. So what are the toolboxes available for 3D modeling? Just as we did for 2D modeling. So just by understanding the 3D modeling toolboxes, then we'll be moving on to implement this 3D modeling. So how will we be able to sketch 3D models? All those things are going to be dealt with in this particular course. So that you know, this is a complete basic course for any kind of beginners and you'll be having a firm grip on the basics so that you will be able to easily become a pro in all the other domains as well. Now let's start off this course by looking at the first topic that we are having in this particular course on CATIA. That is nothing but what is CATIA? So let us understand on more detail or more specifically on CATIA or what is CATIA. I've already briefly explained to you in a single sentence what is CATIA is, right? That is, it is a 3D modeling or 3D sketching software which is available to us. And you know, that is not what it is exactly. So what are the advantages, what are the benefits or which is the industry or which is the sector in which these softwares are employed. Let's see on all those things in this particular domain. 
that is what is cadia or let us understand in more detail on cadia 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 is actually nothing but computer aided three dimensional interactive application did you understand anything out of it i am repeating to you computer aided three dimensional interactive application so are you able to understand or are you able to notice something by mentioning this let me make it more clear for you katya is actually computer aided three dimensional interactive application as i have already told to you what is so special about that or what is so special about that particular sentence it is actually the complete full form of katya c a t i a computer aided three dimensional interactive application i hope you are able to understand what i have actually meant right now and i'm really so sure that most of you had didn't actually know about this didn't actually know that there is a full form for katia or for the software katia and you know most of the people who are actually working in the software still doesn't know on that so that is the first thing which i would like to you know convey to you that is one of the main sort of information which i would like to share with you by you know explaining what is katia and what is it it is actually one of the most leading 3d designing software which is available to us around the globe right and it is actually not just a simple tool or not just an you know basic tool which is enabling us to design or develop any product it is not just a simple product but also one of the most leading product or needing application or leading software which is available to us in order to create design implement this model this and you know come up with a particular product for that particular application or particular solution which a particular product solves so we'll be able to design that particular product in whichever manner we are supposed to be doing so that is what katia the software katia enables us and you know we are able to implement katia in various domains not just one particular domain but in various domains so what are the areas in which we'll be able to use or utilize or what are the areas or segments in which katia is being employed in their business so it ranges from many many new products which we are able to see in day to day lives so even from those particular products ranging from those particular products to even the high sensitive products like aerospace automobile and these are the many other industries in which katia is actually being employed so thereby you can understand that it is a simple tool in which we'll be able to implement designing for the day to day products which we actually see on a daily basis and not just that but also it will be able to perform complex designs which are to be incorporated in a higher sensitive industry like aerospace and automobile so we know that aerospace is actually a very highly sensitive domain where you know where needs to be complete accuracy and all those you know, standards needs to be kept right and that kind of a performance is being able to deliver by this particular software katia that is nothing but computer aided three dimensional interactive application now let's go to our next topic that is nothing but katia gui graphical user interface so gui talks about what are the features which we are getting and where are we getting it so what are the various options or what are the various tools which are available in graphical user interface in katia so anyway in order to get that tools or you know in order to use the tools we need to be knowing where the tools are and how we should be using them and how does it appear to us so it is just about getting familiarized with the software and you know how we will be able to communicate or interact with the software so that is what we are going to see in this particular module that is graphical user interface let's move on to the software and see regarding this so this is how it looks when you actually open the software katia so when you open the software katia this is the kind of user interface they are actually bringing to you so here we can see that the selection happened here is product so product number 1 so that is what is being opened when you actually open the software katia so that is not what we require so when we open the software katia this is what we are getting but this is not what we actually require so we can close that and when we close it we'll be getting a screen like this so we'll be having Uh, start file edit view insert tools windows help and all those options available to us right so you might be thinking what is to be done here so there's nothing to be done you know we, we are not having any tools here only these kind of menu buttons or menu options are there so here what we need to be doing is start mechanical design part design so we will be talking on part design in this particular tutorial or in this particular course so what you need to do after opening the software katia is that you need to be closing the product file which is completely open to you while you open the software you just close that and then move to the start button and the mechanical design part design because part design is what we are going to be covering in this particular topic so part design so after clicking on part design they will be asking for the part name 
So what is the name you want to be saving that particular file? So I'm just simply going ahead with whatever uh, the name is, the whatever the default name is coming. So part one it is. So I'm pressing on OK and this is what we are getting. So now we are in the platform Katia and this is how the user interface looks like. So as usual, you know, as we already had, we are having the main options here, which is completely the same. Start, file, edit, view, insert, tools, windows and help. So this is what we already had, right? So apart from that, what else is available to us? So we are having a lot many um, modules or options here and we're having a lot many options here as well. So in the borders, the right side towards the end and towards the lower corner also, you will be able to see a lot of options available to you. And towards the left here, we are having a tree. This can be called a specification tree or simply a tree. So here we'll be able to access all whatever we have created till now. So if we are creating part by part, part number one, then part number two, then part number three. So if you're going like that, we'll be able to get that thing done or that thing, you know, we'll be able to achieve or we will be able to retrieve all those things by clicking on or by checking on this decision tree. So that is what decision tree is all about it. So it actually tells you what have we created and you know how the actual structure of creation is actually going on. And if in case you want to edit all those things, you know, you will be able to come back to this particular tree and then select whatever we need to open and you know we'll be able to edit in that particular tree and we'll be able to you know do that in detail when we are actually doing or working on the software cat yeah so we as we have seen you know this is how it looks like and you know uh, before uh, directly moving out of the software and you know analyzing or studying how to use software let me tell you one thing so if you are actually designing actually a one particular item let it be any object let it be a bottle let it be a ball let it be any particular item just imagine one particular item in your mind so for particular example i am taking a bottle here so if you need to actually design a bottle actually need to you know implement the design of a bottle by actually making it into a product how can you make that design into a product so there are actually two methods in which we will be able to do anyway in both those methods you need to be having a design basic design so how are we making this particular design to understand that this is how we require so this design needs to be transported to the machine so which is actually manufacturing it it can be a cnc machine or it can be also 3d printing machine so these are the two kinds of manufacturing process which we will be able to do so in cnc machine what is being done so in order to carve a bottle or in order to get the product ready in cnc what we are doing is we carve out the exterior part we just remove the parts or excess parts so that we will be getting the finished product by removing so that is material removal process so here the thing is that you will need to be you know eliminating or the kind of waste you are getting in cnc machine is very high because you're carving all those things based on the designs which we require so that is eliminating or you know material removal and when it comes to 3d printing it is actually material addition so based on the designs we'll be getting that particular model made using 3d printing so we'll be using all those particular materials and you know the designs or the product in which it is to be made Depending upon the designs, we will be able to create that by adding material. So based on the design, the production is being done. And that is how we are able to create materials or items using 3D printing. That is nothing but in CNC, it is material removal process. And in 3D printing, it is material addition process. And in order for that particular machine to understand that this is the design that the machine needs to be printing out, or this is the design that the uh, CNC machine needs to be carving out. So how is the machine or how is the equipment knowing that this is what i need to be doing so simply by exporting this particular uh, model or this particular design which you are creating will not be doing so this particular design needs to be converted or needs to be you know modulated into a different kind of format that is nothing but g codes or m codes so based on the designs which we are doing we will be able to do that so these designs which we are, whichever we are making in this particular platform needs to be converted to g codes or m codes and that can be installed or that can be that file can be downloaded and then pasted onto that machine so that they'll be knowing this is the kind of product i am requiring so they'll be able to understand the complete design by giving the g codes you can simply download that file in a pen drive or an sd card and then you know copy paste that particular file to your machine in which you are actually making that particular product it can be a 3d printer or it can be a cnc machine as well now let's move on and see regarding 2D sketching. 2D sketching in the platform Catia. What are the toolboxes which are available to us which enables us to do the 2D sketching? And in those toolboxes, what are the tools or what are the different kinds of tools which are available to us? And how all these tools are helping us to create 2D sketches? That is what we are going to see right now. And after completely learning about the toolboxes and the tools which are available to us to perform 2D sketching, then what is to be required or what is to be done so what is to be done is nothing but creating 2d sketches 
that's exactly what we are going to be doing right now. So let's move on to the platform category and understand regarding the toolboxes, the tools and how those things are going to help us do or create our studio sketches in the platform category. Yes, this is how exactly it looks like when you open the software category in part design. So we are actually working on part design. So when you open part design, this is how exactly that will be looking like. As I have mentioned before, this is the specification tree or the design tree. And we are, we are having all the options or all the toolboxes and tools available here. And you know, uh, we'll be able to use all these things one by one when you're actually performing or implementing all those things. So before coming to all those things, let me ask you one thing. What is the basic or the first most important thing that you require when you're actually performing 2D sketching? Can you answer me here? So I'm asking you, what is the first or the what is the most important thing that you should be making sure or you should be having before you are doing or going ahead with sketching? So let me answer you there. So the first thing that you should be having is that a planar surface. You will not be able to create a sketch in any other lateral surfaces or complex surfaces. So in order to sketch, you need to be having a plane, not just some random plane, you need to be having a planar surface. So only in those planar surface, you will be able to create your sketch and then you know do whatever you want, design, model, create, and all those things can be done only after having a planar surface. So first thing that you should be having is a planar surface. So here we will be able to see that we are having three planes. This is the XY plane, this is the YZ plane, and this is the XZ plane. So we are having three planes. So First thing we need to be having is selecting one plane in which you know we need to be creating that particular sketch. So here I am selecting this plane that is YC plane. So after creating the selection, we can see that there is an orange or yellowish color which is coming which indicates that that plane is being selected. So we are able to understand that the plane YZ, this is the plane YZ and we are able to see the highlighting here as well in the decision tree. So we are able to see that the plane YZ has been selected. Now, how do we convey that we need to be sketching in this particular plane? So for that, what we need to be doing that first select the plane in which we need to be drawing or we need to be sketching. We have already done that. And after getting that particular selection, you need to be going to the sketch option. So we are having that particular option there towards the right here. It also shows sketch when you hover through it, it will be showing sketch and you know, you can easily identify that by understanding. So it shows a paper and a pencil which indicates sketching. So after making the selection and making sure that is the orange color is coming, that is when the software understand that this is the selection. And then you need to be going to that option sketch. And this is how it comes when you actually create the selection and open to the sketch. So all the toolboxes or the tools which are available to us are completely changed. So depending upon what action you are taking or what performance you are doing in the platform Katia, depending upon all those things, the toolbox and tools will be changing. So when you are entering into 2D sketching, you know, these are the tool sets or these are the tools or toolboxes which are available to us. So, you know, uh, firstly, I would like to mention some of the toolboxes to you so that you will be able to understand which are the toolboxes which are completely necessary for you while you're performing 2D sketching. So we are having a lot of toolbox here, right? So one by one, I'll be letting you know. So I am taking out this particular toolbox. So this is actually the profile toolbox and you know, this is coming vertically because the data has been taken from this side. So I have then uh, clicking on it and pressing shift so that, you know, it will be coming into the horizontal way. So I am, I have got the profile toolbox here and this is the one set of toolbox which is required for me or for you to design or to sketch in 2d platform or 2d sketching right or to perform 2d sketching this is the first toolbox which i would recommend you to have that is profile toolbox and next comes constraint toolbox so pressing shift that is the constraint toolbox and then comes the operation toolbox this is the operation toolbox and this is the sketch toolbox we don't need to uh, press shift here because you know, it is already aligned in the horizontal way. So there is no need to press shift. So this is the sketch toolbox and this is the view toolbox and this is the visualization toolbox. So these are the toolbox which I would recommend you to take it from these panes and keep it in your sketching area itself so that you know you can get familiarized with the names of these toolboxes which are Profile toolbox, constraint toolbox, operational toolbox, sketching toolbox, visualization toolbox, and finally view toolbox. So regarding view toolbox, you know, in most of the uh, activities or most of the tasks which you're performing, you would be having or you would be requiring this parallel toolbox on you. You can keep it here so that you know you'll be able to access that 
whatever performance you're doing or whatever activity you're doing in the platform you'll be able to access that and you can keep it here so zoom and zoom out and all those things are the various tools which are available in view toolbox and coming to all the other toolboxes so starting off with the toolbox profile so i uh, before starting off with uh, all the toolboxes i would recommend you to note these toolboxes down so that you can get familiarized with the toolboxes and what are the tools which you would require and one more thing which i would like to add here is that you know sometimes you might not get all these toolboxes which i have already shown to you these profile toolbox constraint all these toolboxes might not be available to you so in such situations what can you be doing so that you will be able to get access or get those particular toolboxes so in order to explain that let me delete visualization and sketch tools okay i deleted so it is not coming back to this panes that i'm not able to get in these two panes and i've completely lost those particular toolboxes so how can i get that particular toolboxes back or what can it do in order to bring those toolboxes back to the pane so that i can move ahead in the sketching and you know get all those things done so in order to get all those things back what you need to be doing is go to the view option and in the view options you're having the option called toolbars in toolbars you know we'll be able to get to know how which are the tools available and which is actually present uh, in the particular screen so we all the ticked ones are being present in the screen and the ones which are not ticked are the ones which it's not open or which you are not having access to. So the ones which I have deleted are visualization tool. I have got visualization tool. And the other one which I deleted is sketch tool. So let me see whether sketch tool is available. Sketch tools are also unticked. So let me tick that. So here I can get all those toolboxes which is completely unavailable to be in the screen. So in such cases, you can bring all those toolboxes back by doing what in the view option toolbars option you can able to get how many ever toolboxes which you require and these are the basic six toolboxes which i would recommend for you to you know completely study upon because this is the complete basic toolboxes which is available to you profile constraint operation sketch tools visualization and also view toolbox so i'm keeping it here itself so that is what it is all about so these are the various toolboxes now coming to which of the various tools available to us so here you know this is profile tool and here I will be able to draw continuous lines. So I can just go on clicking so that, you know, the drawings will be made possible or drawings will be done. So this is how uh, the tool profile will be acting. So I'm closing that. And then this is a rectangle. So I'll be able to, sorry, this rectangle, I'll be able to draw rectangles here. And then uh, I'll be able to, you know, this is the orange selection which is coming. So I'll be able to again create another rectangle here. So this is what or this is how you should be doing and the various other options are also available to us rectangle is available to us and see this is nothing but oriented rectangle this is also parallelogram and this is centered rectangle and this is also centered parallelogram so in centered rectangle what you will be able to do is we'll be able to get the center point so this, this is the center point that you would require for that particular rectangle to have you can click on that and then you can draw so based on that particular center point the rectangle will be aligned and rectangle will be formed that is the main option now coming to circle so how will you be able to create circle circle some by simply clicking it you will be having other options as well so this is actually nothing but you know we'll be able to click the center point and then assign the radius or assign the tools or assign the dimension so clicking on the center point and then moving it based on that okay that is how you're able to create and also we'll also be able to create circles by using other options as well so this is nothing but three point arc so here we will be able to get three arcs or three points and then see by clicking two points we'll be able to get where do we need to get the arc so all these options are available to us in profile a toolbox and constraint toolbox is nothing but you know we'll be able to get the constraint so so here in constraint box we will be able to get or give the constraint to all these uh, things which we are creating so if i'm selecting the constraint tool option here and then clicking on one slide we will be able to assign the value or that particular length for that particular rectangle and the other constraint which i will be able to do is that you know um, by double clicking i'll be able to continuously give dimensions i am giving the dimension here for diameter as 50 and with, without clicking it again i'll be able to do it again so if i'm double clicking i'll be able to get this access so i don't need to keep on selecting but if i'm single clicking i need to be selecting that particular option again and again so in such cases you can double click and these are all the options available to us corner option chamfer and you know this is nothing but 3d projection of elements and all the other tools are also available to us so basically these are the various tools which is available to us in the platform catia for performing 2d sketching and the other most important thing which i would like to share with you is how to pan how to rotate and or how to zoom in zoom out so in catia the way in which you should be doing all those things to pan to rotate 
to zoom in zoom out it is completely different or completely or slightly different from other software as well so in order to pan you can simply click on the scroll button and then pan so just by clicking on the scroll i'm clicking on the scroll button so just by clicking on the scroll button and dragging you will be able to pan so in order to rotate what you need to be doing is that you need to be clicking both the scroll button and also the right click that's nothing but you need to be clicking simultaneously the scroll button and the right click button and keep on pressing that and then move your mouse so that is how you will be able to rotate see i'm clicking both the scroll button and also the right click button so that i'll be able to rotate so the rotation is being made possible by clicking those two buttons simultaneously so what if you unknowingly not rotated and you know you need to be getting all those things back in the right manner possible or how it is actually was so in order to do that what you can do is you can just select here normal view by clicking on normal view all those things if, even if it is rotated it will be coming back to normal position okay and next comes zoom in zoom out in order to zoom in zoom out you should be pressing exactly the two buttons which i've told you that's nothing but the scroll button and the right click button the only difference is that after clicking you need to be releasing the right click button first you need to be clicking both the buttons that is scroll button and the right click button after clicking all those things you need to be releasing the right button or right click button so that you will be able to scroll so i have clicked both and i've released the right click button and i'm scrolling so that i'll be able to see zoom in zoom out just move your mouse so that you'll be able to zoom in so what is the different uh, way in which you can do that is that in order to pan you can select the scrolling button and pan and in order to rotate you can press both the scrolling button and also the right click button and in order to come back to the original position you can click the normal view and in order to zoom in and zoom out click both and release the right click button click both and release the right click button and then zoom in zoom out now let's have a look at one more 2d sketching so that it will be easy for you to learn familiarize and you know implement the tools and the toolboxes which we are having in Katia so that you know it will be more better and easy for you to accommodate all those things and you know replicate in your software as well so let me open the other drawing for me and this is the drawing which I have for you so that you know you will be able to manage how to draw this and you know how to you know get this uh, particular drawing into your software Katia yeah so let me move on with here so this is the other uh, this is the graph or this is the drawing in which we need to replicate so all the dimensions are given here this is just you know this center of the circle should be from 72 units from the baseline and all those all those diameters is given you know all the required dimensions for the drawing to be happening or to the drawing to be you know implemented all those things are given to us so we just need to start drawing or start sketching in the platform Katia. so what is the first thing which we require in order to start sketching we need to be having a planar surface so we need to be selecting on which plane or in which area we are to be uh, making the sketch right so i am choosing the plane uh, uh, yz so it, there is no restriction of uh, taking a plane here because it's 2d and we are not having any uh, any other motive right so it will be irrespective of which plane you're taking it will be very absolutely fine here so i'm taking this yz plane and then i'm uh, moving on to sketching so after sketching you know i'll be taking into the next platform or the next user interface where i am supposed to be sketching and i'm having access to all the toolbars here as well so starting off with you know uh, by understanding the figure i have already mentioned that you should be having an approach so what is the approach that you should be having so that it will be easy for you to sketch so by understanding or by looking at this particular diagram what i am thinking is you know this thing you know this leftmost side and the bottommost side can be considered or can be starting to draw as an origin from the origin itself so this can be the origin point and you know i'll be able to draw from here to to the side and also from here so that it will be easy for me and you know that is kind of you know a simpler way for me that is what i feel so basically you know you will be able to do that in whatever manner or whatever way which you feel like doing or which is the simplest way you know after practicing a lot of sketches you will be in a position where you will be able to know from where should i start so what is the approach that i should be having so that i can complete the complete sketch in simple amount of time so let us start drawing this particular sketch so in order to create this particular uh, graph i am using the profile tool here in the profile toolbox so what is the difference between profile tool and also the line tool i've already mentioned that in line tool you know you have to be uh, drawing line by line so after completing one line you need to be drawing another line so that is not the case in profile so you will be able to draw continuous lines here and there see this is the complete or this is the actual difference of making a line in profile so if you are taking line you need to be going line by line and that is not what we require here right so what i'm actually trying to do is i thought of actually creating the shape first so i can simply or easily create the shape without any delay or without any requirements right so that is what i am exactly going to do here so i'm starting off from here 
went here and then here and then at the top side and uh, i'm having the right bottom corner here and uh, sorry right side top corner here there right bottom corner here and then joining it so this is what uh, this actually looks like right so this is what i have somewhat got here it does not absolutely right so anyway how can you make it more perfect right so now i'm going to give the dimension so that it will be a replica of the particular sketch so i'm going to double click here on the constraint and then this is what is this dimension this is 88 so i'm giving 88 that is done and also after that i need to be getting 240 on the baseline so if base is 240 and exactly double of that 240 okay now i've got this much and then you know um, the dimensions in this top portion is 88 so i shall click here i'm clicking here and then 88 i mentioned that and then this from here this point to the top position is 64 right so i shall give that as well from this line till this particular point it should be 64 so i am giving the dimensions as well see i have got that and what else i need so from this distance that is from this particular line to this particular point it's 64 itself so i need to be mentioning that as well so i can easily mention that by clicking it here and here sorry sorry i just changed this as well let me make it 64 yeah the height is done i need to be getting this particular portion here so for that what need to be done is i can i can double click from this particular line to this particular point it would be 64 itself so 64 I have given that dimension as well and what else do i need you know i'm having 100 here right so i can implement that 100 here so here it is 98 i need to be changing it as 100 so i did that as well and now see i have got the fully constrained object or fully constrained sketch for the diagram which i need to be drawing so one thing which you should be making sure while you are making your sketch is that all those things should be fully constrained so that you know so when you are carrying forward the sketch make sure that you know the complete sketch is green in color so that it is fully constrained and when we are furthermore working on the particular graph or particular sketch it will not be changed right so this is actually constrained so this this will not be moving so if i even try to drag here and there you know it will not be moving because all the constraints and all the dimensions are already given to it so now what else do we require so we are having the outlines so all the dimensions are given to us and we have already implemented all those things and we just need to be including two circles here and there right so that is what we are going to be doing right now so i'll be selecting another circle so i'll be randomly placing two circles okay let me select it again now i need to be giving the dimensions and also placing the circle in the right position right so in order to get that done i can select on constraint and this is what exactly i need to be having so diameter is 42 so i hope you are able to see that the diameter is 42 from where did i get it so i got it from here and this circle is located at a position 40 from the baseline and 72 from the rightmost side right so let me implement that as well so from here to the center point it would be 40 so it is 50 here so let me make it 40 yes that's what exactly what i did uh, and then i have already selected that from this particular point to the center point sorry let me make it 40 here then the 40 is done and then what i need to be doing is from here this particular point to this particular center point how much is that that is 72 let me give 72 here yes now this circle is also fully constant and this circle is not allowed to move anywhere see but that is not the case here i can move the area or i can move the circle i can also change the dimension of the circle as well see uh, that is the difference between actually the colors the fully constrained one and also the not constrained one so please make sure that whatever you're drawing or whatever sketch you're making please make sure that it's green in color now i should be giving the dimensions and the location for that particular uh, circle as well so, right for this circle the diameter is 64 i'm giving 64 and then what i need to be doing i need to be placing the circle in the right position so let me do that as well i'm double clicking here and from this point till this baseline would be how much is that that is also 72 yes i've got that as well and see from this particular line the center point is not given so in that particular case what we are having is we are having the full length is 240 and the length remaining is 96 and then 72 right so we can just subtract 240 minus 96 minus 72 in order to get this particular length okay so we can do that or else what we can do we can give the dimension from this particular point to this particular side by mentioning 96 plus 72 so i am doing the other way around so what needs to be done is i can select on the constraint bar and then select this particular side and then the center point 
sorry yeah and let me correct it here that is 72 and uh, and then the constraints from here till this point it would be how much would it be it should be 240 minus 96 minus 72 so we'll be able to perform calculations as well here let it be a complex calculation which includes bracket or anything you know we'll be able to get that possible here so this is how we are able to create or replicate this particular sketch under the CATIA software as well and this is simple as that you know just by having a look at the uh, diagram or looking at the figure which we actually want to replicate to the software just have a look at that study the figure study the dimensions what are the dimensions which we are given and which are the dimensions which we should be knowing in order to draw this particular figure and you know we'll be given some hints here and there so that you know we'll be able to uh, get the dimensions which is some of the dimensions which may not be given in the uh, graph or the sketch or the drawing to us so even then you know we'll be given the clues in which we'll be able to draw that particular uh, sketch completely so this is how your approach should be and this is how simple your 2d sketching is in the path from CATIA. now let's move on and see how we'll be able to implement 2d sketching we already have gone through the 2D sketching toolboxes. What are the toolboxes available to us? And in those toolboxes, what are the tools available to us which would enable us to perform 2D sketching in the platform CATIA? That is what exactly we are trying to learn in this particular module that is 2D sketching. Let's move on to the platform and see how we'll be able to implement that. So now we are in the platform CATIA and here we are going to be learning how to implement 2D sketching. So the first thing which we require before sketching is that we need to be selecting the plane in which we should be actually implementing the sketching or drawing the sketching. The first thing which we require by creating or for creating 2D sketches are the plane, the planar surface for the sketching. So first thing which we should do is that select the plane. So this is the plane which I would require that is nothing but the YZ plane. I have selected the plane and I've got the color as orange which indicates that the software has got to know that this is the plane which I have selected right now. And how should I go to the sketching option or sketching platform where I'll be able to sketch. That is nothing but I'll be able to move that here. These are all the toolboxes and the tools which are available to me. And with all these boxes, how am I going to create a 2D sketch? So this is the uh, sketch which I am going to draw here so that you, know, you will be able to understand. This is a complete basic sketch which anyone would be able to create using the software. And so then you will be able to grab more things, you know, as we move on. So this is the first sketch which we are trying to draw here. And, you know, let me come to this thing. So then we are, you are able to see this. So let me start off by you know explaining to you how we'll be able to draw this particular diagram. So in order to get this things going, you know, we should be actually looking at the dimensions which is given to us. We should be knowing what all are the things which is given to us. You know, the length is given here 60, the length here is given 70, the radius of this inner circle is given uh, 20, and the radius of the arc, the outer arc is given 35, and we are also given the inner dimensions of the inner rectangle as well. So by having to know regarding the particular figure in which we are able to duplicate or replicate in the particular software, we should be actually studying the figure first. And you know, by studying the figure or studying the uh, whatever we are actually having to replicate or draw or design, we'll be able to know how should we be approaching those particular um, figures so that you know we'll be able to accommodate or replicate that in the particular software. So only by studying the figures what we actually have to replicate, only then we'll be able to know how the approach should be. So if you start uh, by starting from this point, you know, sometimes it will be difficult. Sometimes by starting from this point, it may be very easy. So by practice, you know, you will be able to know what is the approach that you should be having so that you can get that done very easily at a faster pace. So without having much difficulty. So how will you be able to do that? So that all those things can be accommodated or you will be able to inculcate that feature only by practicing. So by practicing many, 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 many. Uh, drawings you will be able to come in a position where you will be able to understand where should I start with so by understanding this you know I think I should be starting with this inner circle and then the outer circle and then by moving on with the outer dimensions which is given to me so that is exactly what I am going to do here so in order to start with I am selecting the circle that is the inner circle the radius is 20 so I have drawn the circle and also I am drawing the outer circle as well so in order to draw the outer circle I am selecting that so here are two circles available for me so here the radius is 20 and the radius is 35. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I have double clicked here and the constraint uh, I have selected here. So it is orange. So it, it, it mentions that, you know, I've already selected this particular tool and this is uh, what I have done. So in order to get that particular point done. So this is 120 dimensions. So I shall have it 270 because 35 is the radius. 35 into 20 
so i have got the outer outer circle or the outer arc which i need to be having so the next one is the diameter would be 40 so in order to do that i have already selected that so 40 i shall mention 40 here so i've already got these two circles so this part is completely done and now what i should be doing is that i should be drawing the rectangle so i can be starting from here and then you know let me let me draw like this so i simply drew a rectangle and then what i need to be doing is i should be dimensioning it so i should be marking the dimensions so 60 here and then here i should be selecting the constant again and then it would be 70 here so i have exactly done that so now what should be done no this actually this can actually be marked as tangential so i'm selecting this and now controls like this and also i'm going to this option in the constraint which is constraint define in dialog box so i'll be able to do that you know uh, so what i'm trying to do is i am trying to make it as tangent this line passing through the circle will be tangent so that is exactly what i am going to do here so that is exactly what i have already done so that is done and also the exact same can be applied here as well i'm selecting here uh, i'm selecting both of these things and then constraint tangent same so it is actually showing over constraint here right because there is no need for me to give a constraint there because it was already green so when it's already green and when you're giving more constraint you know it will be over constraint so i am eliminating that and you know this is completely green so what i need to be doing further one so this arc this is not required right so let me eliminate that in order to eliminate that i have to go to the toolbox operation in toolbox operation or the operation toolbox the third one is trim so in trim box you know you should be dropping it down and here we'll be able to get quick trim so that is the option which we require in order to eliminate this line or this curve which is not needed right so i can eliminate that so just by clicking on this quick trim and just by clicking on this it will be able to cut that particular part off and now also you know this purple thing is coming up so what can be done so i should be making sure that there is no other uh, over constraint which is being coming so there is now some over constraint which is happening so exactly that is the reason why it is being showing like that let me start selecting this and deleting that so by deleting that over constraint signal has been completely gone because that was over constraint so now it's completely green and i have completely know that this is completely constant there is no motion possible see if i'm selecting and dragging it here and there there is no motion possible so that is exactly what i actually require so that is also done and now what i require is i should be requiring this inner rectangle so in order to get that done let me go let me create a centered rectangle and you know uh, let me click here and then yes this is what i have done and now i need to give dimensions for that so in order to give dimensions for that you know let me double click here so that you know i don't need to go again and click it there so double clicking here i will be able to give 50 so 50 is the dimension which i require and then I, by here i need to be giving 15 i hope uh, you get me from where i'm getting the dimension 50 this is 50 here 15 is here 15 is here yeah 15 is here so see now what has happened is this rectangle is coming to one corner or one side and that is not how it should be happening so it should be in the center right so the dimensions is also given for that as well that is 10 from the side and 15 from the uh, bottom side so that can also be implemented by double clicking on the constraint and then by giving this line and also by clicking on this line i'll be able to change that 15 so it is actually 15 so i don't need to change again the other thing which i require is from this line to this line would also be 10 right so exactly as it is in the other side see now i have got a fully constrained figure as of i should be getting from the left side figure so the dimensions check the dimension 60 is coming here 70 is coming here 70 is coming the radius is 20 so the diameter would be 40 the diameter of this thing would be 40 yes that is exactly right and then the radius of this particular circle or this particular arc is 35 so the diameter of that particular um, circle should also be 70 see one thing which i forgot here one thing which i should be eliminating or removing here is this particular line see i have already uh, drawn um, rectangle right that particular line of that particular rectangle is being present so that is not required so in order to get that you know i shall avoid that so a quick trim so i shall avoid this line okay so there is other things also which is coming or which is going so let me double click here let me click here yeah everything has gone now you can see that these three lines line number one two three these three lines are out of constraint they are not fully constrained so that is what 
our concern is right now because you know all the other things are in green color and these three lines are out of green or out of fully constrained mode and you know that can go wrong so whenever some things or some progress can be happening that situation you know that this dimension can be going wrong and you know can be creating a lot of trouble in further stages so it is always better to make it green that is make it fully constrained so let me see uh, which way it is going so it is not moving anywhere here so i'm able to drag so when i'm dragging it's not going so it is not going here as well it's not going here as well so this way not even this way um this way also it is not going so it is actually kind of fully constrained and there is no other motion possible for this particular three lines so in this particular condition what can be done is that we will be able to select each of these lines that I have selected each of these three lines and then what i need to be doing is fix those three lines so that it is not moving anywhere anyway when i tried moving those three lines it was not moving just to be on the safer side in such conditions what can we do we can just select these three lines and then we can fix it we can fix okay see now this over constraint is coming let me delete uh, one thing uh, after deleting this dimension you know it is over constraint is also gone and now i have got a completely or fully constrained model which i should be getting by following the instructions or following the dimensions which is given to me in this particular graph or in this particular drawing so based on this drawing and based on the dimensions which was given to me in this particular drawing i made the drawing right exactly following the dimensions following the distance or following the gaps and faces so you know uh, by following you know you will also be thinking why can't i start from a different completely different approach why can't i start by following this particular rectangle first and then you know this line and then why can't i create the circle and then close it again that is also possible so i didn't feel like doing that because you know i didn't think of that as a much easier way because you know uh, out of my experience or my practice in this particular software i thought this would be a better approach for me and you know it is completely up to you whether what kind of approach or what is the first step that you should be doing so it is completely fine for you in order to take any different approach that is completely fine as far as you are getting the complete figure in a fully constrained manner you are completely good to go so there is nothing of that sort so by saying that you know you need to be following this particular approach or you are wrong there is nothing of that particular sort in whichever manner or whichever approach you are taking you know it is completely fine as far as you are getting what you should be getting as far as you are getting what you should be getting it is you are completely fine to go completely fine to use any method possible or any tool or any toolbox is possible by using different toolboxes or tools also you will be able to use or you will be able to come in a situation where you are able to achieve or able to be in a position of completing this particular figure in the particular or the most easiest way just it's not doing about the things it's about doing the things in the right manner in the quickest way possible so all those things can be able to be achieved by practicing so i would request you to not just practice in this particular one 2d dimension or 2d figure but you know keep practicing in more and more uh, new new sketches and new new drawings so that you know you will be able to improve your skills and improve your speed in which you will be you are able to achieve what you should be actually achieving so you can be a pro in the software so this is all about it in the 2d sketching now the time has come for us to move on to 3D sketching. Likewise, we saw in 2D sketching, we saw regarding the 2D sketching toolboxes, the tools available in each of the toolboxes in 2D sketching. Now we are going on to 3D sketching. Similarly to what we saw, we are having several toolboxes for 3D sketching as well. And we'll be looking at each of the elements or each of the tools available in each of the toolboxes so that we'll be having an idea on how to start or what should be the approach in order to implement 3D sketching in the platform catia let's move on to the platform and see how we'll be able to do that now we are in the platform catia and you know we are in the part designing area where we are going to be implementing 3d sketching so right after coming to the 3d sketching platform on catia what we should be doing is understand the toolboxes which are available to us and what are the basic toolboxes which we require so i would recommend you to take all these toolboxes which are required so there are, there are not many toolboxes here which we need for basic uses and for advanced uses as well so i would recommend you to take out the basic toolboxes from the side panes and the bottom pane so that you will be able to familiarize with the toolbox name and you know it will be easy for you to recollect and you know get the toolboxes or tools available in each of the toolboxes so that it will be easy for you to get familiarized and you know easy for you to take them whenever you require them so in order to start with we are having the sketch based features so that is our first main toolbox which we require and we are also having sketcher here so apart from the basic these two toolboxes i've already mentioned that for every workbench we are working in the software catia we require a toolbox called as view so we are having all those options here the 
this is the view toolbox here and you know we all need that this particular toolbox in whichever workbench we are working on so let's keep it here itself so apart from that what are the other toolboxes we already talked about sketch based feature toolbox and also sketch a toolbox and after that we are having this kind of toolbox that is nothing but dresser features so dresser feature is the next toolbox which i would like to introduce to you and apart from that you are also having transformation toolbox so transformation features toolbox is there sorry so i'm moving it here so let me arrange it we are having sketch based features dresser features transformation features and you're also having a reference elements so we are having a reference element and finally comes sketching so these are the basic features or basic toolboxes which you would require in order to move forward with 3d sketching in the platform cadian so what are these toolboxes so starting off with sketch based features so as the name suggests all the tools available in sketch based features can be directly implemented right after making the sketch so whatever sketch are you requiring so right after creating that particular sketch we will be able to directly implement all the tools or all the features which is available in sketch based features that is what we are able to achieve from this particular toolbox that is sketch based feature so if you are having a sketch and if you need to make it into 3d so sketch is nothing but a 2d dimension right so after that you know after achieving that two dimensional sketch or drawing done we need to be implementing into 3d structure so how can that be made so all those things can be attained right after creating sketch so all those things comes under sketch based features where we will be able to directly implement all those tools or all those features to the 2d sketches which we have already created next comes dresser features dresser features is actually nothing but you know we will be able to you know polish modify or you know create our own elements to those particular 3d object or 3d model which we are already created let it be you know grooving let it be chamfering let it be cornering let it be anything of that sort so we will be able to implement you know polishing modifications slight changes which we require in that particular 3d model so that is all what we will be able to implement using dress app features so if you are looking at the options available here you know these are you know uh, in a position where we are not able to select this is because we are already not having any sketches so right after having a sketch and having a 3d element on your screen only then you will be able to select these so what are the options available here we are having edge fillet chamfer draft angle shell thickness thread and also other features as well so these are the basic features which is available to us in dresser features next coming to transformation features transformation features is actually nothing but when we want to replicate something when we want to make something duplicate so you know we have already having something we are already having something and we need that to be replicated into a different kind of transformation or you know in a different space as well so in order to get that done we are having transformation features where we need to have a pattern so if you are having one pattern and you know we need to be getting in as a several patterns so we'll be able to do that in transformation features we, we need to be mirroring some object mirroring some design all those things can be made here in transformation features all those patterns design mirroring and all those can be implemented on using the tools on transformation features next comes reference elements reference elements is actually nothing but you know when you require to draw something to sketch something you know you should be having planar surfaces right so in order to have a planar surface some cases you might not be having a planar surfaces inbuilt so in such situations you know you need to be creating planar surfaces so that will be made possible using reference elements and it also helps us to make a reference axis reference points as well so that you know it will be easy for us to make dimensions make the particular sketching and you know make the constraints available to us all those things all those reference materials which we require in order to get our particular output ready all those things may can be made possible using reference elements reference points reference axis reference planes and all those things can be achieved in reference elements now coming to sketcher toolbox so in sketcher toolbox it enables us to sketch so in whichever plane are we supposed to sketch so we can select the sketch or we can select the plane and then you know we can move on to the sketch options available to us in the sketcher toolbox so that we will be taken to the area where we are able to sketch and all the toolboxes which are available or which are present or which are required in order to make the sketch so we'll be taken to that platform right after making the sketch options available in sketch toolbox and as i've already mentioned before we are having the view toolbar which enables us to you know zoom in zoom out uh, get the particular normal view and all those things in the view toolbox as well now let's see how we'll be able to create 3d sketches so in order to create 3d sketches what i've already mentioned to you so in order to get 3d sketches we need to be having two dimensional sketches initially so only by having two dimensional sketches we will be able to create three dimensional sketches so in order to create 2d sketches 
how do we create we need to be having a planar surface so the well, first thing that we should be doing in order to create a 3d sketch is have 2d sketch and to have 2d sketch we need to be having a planar surface so likewise in order to get a 3d sketch happening we need to be initially having a planar surface to create the 2d sketch so that is exactly what i am going to try or i am going to implement right now so let me create this particular plane or and let me create the sketch on that particular plane so the first thing which i have done is i have selected the plane in which i need to be having the drawing done so after selecting the plane i am going to the sketcher option and you know i am taken to that particular sketch where i need to be having that particular sketch made so let me start off by creating a simple 3d sketch so what is the simplest 3d sketching or 3d modeling that can be done so the simplest 3d sketching that can be done is a cylinder a keyboard a cube and all those things right so let me start off by drawing a cylinder so in order to have a cylinder what is the basic thing or what is the 2d stick that you should be requiring that is nothing but a circle so just by having a two dimensional circle we will be able to create a three dimensional cylinder so the first thing which you need to be doing is you need to be going to the profiles toolbox which i have already covered in the last session so that is nothing but you know i should be going to the circle option in the profile toolbox and you know i am creating a circle see i have already created a circle and i am actually in a selection so i have already selected the circle also so that is why it is showing orange in color so i am if i am clicking anywhere outside it will be white in color where it doesn't simplify that it is selected and now this is not a constrained circle so it will be able to move here and there so i am not bothered about that right now because i am going to show you how we'll be able to create 3d structures right so right after creating this 2d circle we need to be exiting the sketch and moving on to the 3d platform right so where we'll be able to implement 3d opportunities or 3d toolboxes or 3d tools so in order to get that particular thing done right after creating the sketch you need to be moving out of this particular template right so in order to move out of this template you know what you should be doing is make sure that you have completely done with the sketches which you actually need to complete and right after completing it you can move on to exit sketching which is available here so exit workbench so we'll be completely taken away from this particular workbench so right after clicking that we will be taken to a 3d environment where we'll be able to see what we have actually created so this is the sketch which we actually created so i have already mentioned that in specification 3 we'll be able to see whatever we have created so whatever i've created will be shown in the specification 3 right so right after clicking plus here it will be showing the sketch so this is the sketch which we have already created so let me create the cylinder so in order to create a cylinder we need to be initially selecting the 2d sketch which we have actually drawn in order to get the 3d figure out of it so the first thing which i am going to do here is select the 2d sketch or 2d environment in which you know i have created so that you know i'll be able to create this 3d model out of it so just by clicking on it you know i'll be selecting the circle or selecting the 2d sketch and after that i need to be going to the sketch based features as i've already mentioned to you this is the first or this is the toolbox which is available to you which you will be able to implement right after creating your sketch right right after creating your sketch the tools which is available to you in sketch based features will always be open to you right so in here in order to get that particular 3d model done the option which we are having is pad so pad will make sure that you know from the 2d element it will be made into 3d element so the dialog box here comes rightly after clicking the pad option that is pad definition toolbox or dialog box comes to me and it is asking for me the length so how much should be the height of this particular cylinder which i am trying to incorporate right so if you're not so particular or if you're not so sure on having how much height or how much dimension for the cylinder you can just give a preview and see how it looks so here in this particular view you're not knowing how much length is it is having right so i can be rolling here so this is the cylinder which i have made so i don't think this is uh, in, uh, you know enough for me so i am giving 100 so and then i can give okay see now i have got the preview and i have got the complete cylinder created just by making a circle out of the 2d sketching which is available to me and i've already started creating the 3d models so this is how simple it is so what if you need to edit what if you've already created the 3d sketch and what if you need to edit something out of it so that you know you will be able to modify or you will be able to alter things based on your requirements so in order to get that done also you can go to the specification frame which is available to you here and you know it completely shows what have you have done actually right now so it shows that we have created a pad so this is the pad so what is the what is the padded element or what is the pad which we have implemented it will be selected right after clicking on the pad 
on the specification frame. So right after clicking on it, you know, the selection will be made on the screen regarding which is the pad you have created on that particular area. So this is the pad. So just by double clicking here, we'll be able to, you know, again modify. So I need to be controlling the length. So if you need to be doing that, you know, you can do that. What if I need 110 uh, height here? And you know, there are also other options available to us. So what if you never needed to have the extrusion or the, the padding or the 3D environment in this particular side? What if you wanted to create it towards the other side? So in order to get that particular item done, you know, what you can do is you can give reverse direction. So the direction which is coming here. So this is the actual sketch we've actually made and the extrusion or the pad happened in this direction, right? So 100 centimeters or 100 units have been coming in that, this direction. What if you need to have that particular in the opposite direction, this side? So in order to get that done, you can have an option here on reverse direction. So it will be showing this particular thing will be eliminated and all these things will be reflected to you in the opposite side. So in order to get that done, you can give reverse direction as well. So if I'm giving OK, see, it is completely reversed. So the extrusion or the pad which has happened is completely reversed in the opposite direction. Or what if you need to get in the normal direction itself? You know, you can go back again and then, you know, you can give reverse direction and again, OK. So what if you need to get the pad or you need to be getting that particular three dimensional figure coming to both of the sides? So how can that be made possible, right? So that is also made possible using the software cat here by giving an option called mirrored extent so that, you know, it will be extruded or it will be padded to both the sides. So now you can see that it is going to this side as well as it is going to downside. So this is the area in which we created the actual sketch and by giving mirrored extent, we'll be able to move to this side that is 110 mm this side and 110 mm this side. So what if I don't want 110 mm? So I require us nothing but 50 mm. So just by giving 50 mm, it will be showing me like this. See, it is coming from here to this side and also to this side. So based on your requirements, you will be able to do mirror extent, reverse direction and all those things using the toolbox available to us in sketch based features that is tool pad. So this is how you create a cylinder and I'm clicking OK here. Now we saw regarding how to change the extrusion part, right? So if we are given the length of the cylinder to particular height of um, 100 units, we saw how we'll be able to change it by 50 units or any other units which you require. Now, what if you need to control the size of the cylinder by controlling the cross section? So in order to control the cross section, what you can do, you can go to the sketch and then what you can do is right after going to sketch, you can control the radius or control the diameter of that particular circle so that the cross section can be altered in likewise. So after going to sketch option, you know, we'll be able to control the cross section by giving the constant option and then by selecting on the circle, we'll be able to see that this diameter is actually 56. What if I don't require 56? I have a much lesser diameter, so I can give. So I can give 30 and I press enter. And you would be thinking, so I already changed the dimension of the circle. So how will it change the dimension of the cylinder? So will that create an error? Because the dimension of the cylinder is 56, which was before, which was actually the 56. And now I'm changing it to 30 in this particular sketch. And how will the 3D environment feel like? So the 3D sketch will be created based on the elements or which one the inputs which we are giving to the selection. So based on that, it will be completing all the accommodation or accommodating all the changes which we are creating in this 2D environment. So that is completely be reflected in the 3D environment as well. So we'll be able to see that just by, you know, exiting sketch. So see, we are able to see that the dimension or the cross section of this particular cylinder has reduced. Now, what if you need to, you know, create some more additional materials to this particular cylinder? So how can you do that? The first thing which I have already mentioned that in order to create something, in order to sketch something, you need to be having a planar surface. So these are the three planes which is available to us, right? So apart from this, where all will we be able to draw? So for example, see, this is having a planar surface and this side is also having a planar surface. So the cylinder is having two planar surfaces within the body itself. So irrespective of the planes, we'll also be able to create 2D sketches on the body itself. The provided option or a provided um, condition is that you should be having a planar surface. Even if it's on the body, it is all completely fine. If it is actually having a planar surface, we'll be able to start our sketch in that particular plane itself. So what if, you know, I've already created a cylinder. So what if I need to create a um, screw? So in order to create a screw, you know, I need to be having the head of the screw here, right? So I can create it either here or either here. So based on my requirement, I should be knowing where I should be creating the particular head, right? 
So in this particular area, I am thinking of creating the head here. So that is the main reason why I am selecting on this plane so that I'll be able to know that this is the area where I would like to have the particular head and that is the reason why I am planning to do my sketch in that particular plane itself. So after selecting this, what should I be doing? I should be moving on to the sketch option where I'll be taken into the 3D environment and I'll be able to start the sketching in there. So I have already selected that particular plane and I'll be able to start drawing or start working on the head of this particular screw. So after that, you know, I'll be dropping down this particular rectangle and I'll be taking this polygon. So after selecting the polygon, I can be drawing it here. So how should I require, how would I require it? So based on my requirement, you know, I can select it here. And if you, if you want to give some dimensions, you know, you can create that as well. So I'm deleting it here. So what if you actually want a dimension to happen for this particular polygon? So in order to get that done, you know, you can go to the constant option, select one side and say, so this is 25.82, let's say I need 20. Oh, that is too small. So I'll be making it 25 itself. That is okay for me. So I'm making it 25 and what I should be doing. So I have completed the sketch and now in order to get a 3D element done, I need to be exiting the sketch. So make sure that you're completely done with the sketches. So after the, uh, done with the sketches, you know, you need to be making sure you're moving out of the sketch by exiting your workbench. So here I would like to introduce one more step. So in order to create a 3D environment, you know, the basic thing which you should be thinking or you should be having in your mind is that the sketches which you're making should be completely closed. So if it's not closed, you'll not be able to create a pad. So you'll not be able to convert that particular 2D sketch into a 3D model. So one thing which you should be making sure is that you should be making sure the 2D environment or a 2D sketch which you've made is completely closed. If not, you'll not be able to create a sketch or you'll not be able to create a 3D model. So for example, see if I am going to cut here, I'm going to trim this particular side. So see, I've eliminated on this, it's actually an open figure, it's not a closed figure. And I'm executing sketch and you know, I'm taken into the 3D environment where I'll be able to convert this particular uh, figure into 3D, right? So let me try doing that. So I need to be selecting on this particular sketch. So I selected on the sketch where I need to be you know, extruding or I need to be padding. So I'm going to the option pad and see it is showing topological operators invalid profile body. So this is showing because the complete profile is not closed. So you should be making sure that whatever you're creating should be completely closed so that you know only then it will be able to convert the 2D sketches to, to 3D model. So in order to get that done, you need to be going back and you need to close this and then you can go to the sketch, double clicking on the sketch and you know you can simply join this from this particular point to this particular point and you know you can see that it is completely closed. So after getting it completely closed, you can move to the 3D model by exiting the sketch, exiting the workbench and then after making the selection, you can go to the pad option and you know you will be able to see. So this is 50 units to the upper side. So what if you want to do the downside? So that is not how you require it. So anyway, you need to do the upper side itself. So you can give reverse direction and also you don't need this much. So let me give 10. So would that do? So 10 would be two less. Let me give 20. 20 would that do? Okay, 20 also too big. So let me give 15. Okay, this would do, right? So this would do. Okay, so if you think, you know, you have actually having what you actually require. So I think I feel like reducing the diameter of the cylinder a bit more or increasing the size of the bolt a bit more. But you know, this is not the actual screw which we require. Right? So this is just for basic explanation on the tools. So I would I would not mind that. So I'm pressing OK and exiting it and I'm able to create a sketch. So since this looks too odd for me, I'm going back to the sketch which I created. So I'm reducing the diameter to let's say 20 and I'm exiting sketch. So I'm able to create this particular screw. So even if you created the particular 3D environment or 3D sketches or 3D model, some point of time you might feel that the dimension which you have given earlier is not suiting right. So there is no problem in giving the dimension earlier. You will be able to go back to your area and see how much you have given and how much you need to give in order to get the particular item done in the right manner. So as I've said, you know, you'll be able to achieve all those things in the specification tree where you can see how much pad have you created. So you can see pad one and pad two because you have extruded two times or you have used the option pad two times. That is nothing but first for this particular cylinder to happen and next one for, for this particular hexagon or this particular polygon for the head of the screw. So you will also be able to create the sketch. This is the circular sketch which you created initially and this is the 
polygonal sketch or the hexagonal sketch which you created initially so you'll be able to create or you'll be able to navigate to all of the areas or all of the items which you have already sketched in the platform catia using the specification free as well so this is how you will be able to implement 3d sketching in the environment catia now let's see regarding one more implementation of a 3d model in the software catia so that it will be easy for you to understand inculcate and also have a clear clarity on the tools and the sketches and also on the toolbox which are available to us so the model which i am going to create here is now simple as a table so not simple as a table i'm going to create a table here so we know that we need to be having four legs for a table and also the top surface that inculcates the table right so we need to be having the flat surface or the table top and also the four legs so in order to get that what can you be doing so what is the approach that you should be having so if you're trying to create the legs first you need to be you know making sure that the flat surface or the top table or the top part of the table is coming parallel or matching for the four legs which you were creating so that is kind of a difficult or an orthodox way of approaching the particular 3d model right so you'll be able to know that that is not the way and you know you'll be needing to first create the table top that is a flat surface and then from the flat surface we'll be able to create four legs for the table which will you know be much more easier for you to create a table so that is exactly what i am going to do and that is the exact way in which i am going to be approaching this particular table or this particular model or creation on the 3d modeling table so in order to do that you know i should be selecting the surface one that is a plain surface and after creating the selection i'm ready after selecting the surface i need to be moving on to the sketch option so i am taking to the sketch workbench here and i'll be able to see uh, all the toolbox and tools available for me and you know i should be moving from the rectangle option for the table top so i am going for centered rectangle so here the table top or the flat surface of the table you know i am considering as rectangle so if you want to create in a circle or a square table and all such things you know you will be able to simply go on and select the particular tool for that so what I've taken here is a center rectangle and you know I am randomly keeping it here and you know I am giving the dimensions for this particular table so that is one thing but I'm giving it um, 250 so let me give 250 here sorry that is 150 I'm giving 250 here so the length of the table is 250 how much would be the width so the width should be um, let me say 150 will that do uh, let me keep it to 140 yeah that's what do so this is the kind of um, approach or this is the kind of um, table top which i require and this the dimension seems okay to me right now so if i uh, feel that you know i need to be changing the dimension here and there i'll be able to do as i said before and as i already did before in the screw part so i've already made you know the sketch done and i feel that the corners are you know a bit sharp here so i don't think that the table corners should be this sharp enough so it can be curved so i can move to the operation toolbox and click on the corner option here so i'll be able to select the, these two lines so basically you know i'll be able to control by just randomly moving here and there and just by clicking it over there i'll be able to get the particular thing done or else i will also be able to give the radius in the sketch tools available to me so in there also i'll be able to give the dimension so i'm not going for that here so i have got a curve here so let me adjust it so let me give it 23 so 23 was perfectly fine so i can uh, you know just trim off the other parts i can trim off i can trim off here i can trim off this as well so yes i'm able to trim off this so i need to be having this curve on the four sides as well right so i need to be having this on the other three sides as well so in order to do that you now i can select this I can select the curvature which I require and then I can go for the mirror option here this is the mirror option which is available to me in the operation toolbox so just by clicking on mirror and clicking on the reference axis so from which axis or which should be the reference axis which from which I should be mirroring so I should be in order to get it on this side you know I should be mirroring is based on this particular axis right so that's exactly what I'm going to do by clicking on this particular axis I'll be having that particular replica here as well so I have got that particular thing as well. So in order to get these two replicated or mirrored into the both the lower sides or the lower corners, I can imply the same thing as well. I selected the two uh, curvatures and then selected on the mirror and the axis would be the horizontal axis. So I am getting all the four corners as rounded. And then what I need to know next is I need to be trimming off the other unwanted areas. So I am doing that right now. Yeah, I am getting all this removed. 
so unnecessary portions see now i'm having a clear sketch on the tabletop so this is the tabletop and how the tabletop shape should be looking like so i've got that particular thing done so, so this is the particular view which i'm getting so after right after clicking on this you know i'll be able to move to the 3d environment by exiting the workbench so I exit the workbench there's one more thing which i would like to you know add here is that i'm moving to the sketch again so i've already mentioned in order to sketch or in order to make a 3d model you need to be having a closed sketch right so if the sketch is not closed you'll not be having you will not be able to showcase or you'll not be able to make a 3d model so at that particular point of time it shows some error boxes right so error pop-ups will be coming if the sketch is not closed so in order to make sure that the sketch you have created is closed you have a tool or you have an option to do that so you can go to the tool option here and then you have the option sketch analysis which gives you the idea whether the particular sketch you have created in this particular sketch is closed or isolated so after clicking on sketch analysis you will be having the implicit profile is completely closed so if it's completely closed it will be showing closed and if it's not so if it's actually an open one you know it will be showing isolated so see i'll be able to see the closed figure here so let me try on the isolated part as well so i am creating one line here so i've created one line so it, it is not closed right this is not a closed sketch so let me see how it shows when i'm doing a sketch analysis for it so the implicit profile is actually closed and it is having eight curves and coming to here the line the line is actually isolated and if i'm trying to extrude this it will be showing an error for me so i'll be able to uh, make this particular selection and then delete it so i'll be able to know which are all the sketches or which are all the elements which are isolated so just by knowing that you know i'll be able to delete that or i'll be able to make it closed so here i don't need this so i am deleting it and i am exiting the workbench and i have got the tabletop now what i should be doing is i need to be making the 3d model of this particular sketch so what is the option available to me here in the 3d environment that is nothing but the pad tool or the pad option in the sketch based features so i am making the selection here this is what i need to be padding so after making the selections i am going to the pad tool here and then you know they're asking me for the dimension so let me try giving 10 so after giving 10 yeah i think 10 would do right so 10 is 10 is yeah 10 is okay or let me give 8 yeah i'm giving 8 here and it looks perfect for me from my end so if you're not comfortable with it you know you can go forward with any number of dimensions or any units which you feel comfortable so by now we have completed the tabletop and let's move on and create the leg portion right we need to be having four legs here so in order to create four legs i'll be creating one circle here so i've created one circle here and then you know actually can i can you simply mirror it right so after clicking mirror and just after clicking the reference axis i'll be able to mirror it towards this side and just by clicking on this particular element and this particular element and clicking on mirror again and this particular reference axis i'll be able to replicate sorry i'll be able to replicate to the both the left sides as well so let me do that yes i have got the four legs as well so what if i don't need this particular dimension so i need to be having a different dimension here so i can just go on to the dimensions and select this diameter 20 so let me give 10 see all those four ones although all the four circles have changed the dimension that is because we have mirrored it so what exactly have i done on the first image or the first circle it will be completely duplicated for the other ones as well which i have operated or i have created using the operation mirror so that is one advantage we are having whenever we create any change that will be you know accommodated for all the ones which we have mirrored as well so this is the complete length this size seems appropriate for me and after executing such you know i'll be able to create whatever i need to be creating so i have i'm in the tabletop and i'm also having the sketch for this particular legs which i need to create so in order to create the table legs so i need to be using the option pad right so i need to be selecting the sketch so just by selecting the sketch you know all the four legs will be selected because in that particular sketch only we created this particular four sketches of the four circles right so just by creating the sketch for we'll be having the sketch of all the four legs and after selecting that you know we have the pad option here and by selecting this particular limit you know we'll be able to drag it down so we'll be able to drag it down towards the down part or towards the up part as well so in order to create that in the opposite direction you can create simply click on this particular arrow if you need click on that you know it will be extruding on the other part or it will be padding on the other part and if you click it once again it will be coming back to the bottom side which we actually require and in order to elongate you can simply give the dimensions here or else you can click on limit one and then you know you can elongate as you require so i am watching it here and then i am dragging it down 
and then I think this seems fine. Okay, I'm clicking on OK. See, I have our table. So this is how simple it is to create a table or any 3D element which you actually require. So here I have done two extrusions or two paddings. That is one for the tabletop and also for the four legs at one go. So I didn't go on creating this particular leg and then this leg and then this leg and then this leg. So it is not how I created the approach which I took is not. I created whole those four legs as single sketch in that particular area and then I mirrored it. I mirrored all those things using the mirror option and I was able to replicate all the changes which is accommodating to one circle into other three circles as well. And then since all the four circles was containing in a single sketch, I was able to extrude or I was able to pad this particular four legs in one go as such. So this is how simple it is for you to create any number of 3D sketches in the environment cat yeah? and you know these are the options available to us and you know, it is completely simple for us to create a 3D model in the software cat yeah? By now we have come to the end of this course on cat yeah? I hope you have understood whatever I have taught to you on cat yeah? This is complete basic course so even if you are a beginner you will be able to understand and I am sure that whatever which I have covered is not rocket science. So you will be able to simply by watching the video you will be able to understand but in order to learn how to perform that there is no other easy way. You need to be installing the software and you need to be practicing on the software and only then you will be able to understand how to implement and how the approach should be. So by understanding or watching this video you will be having an idea on how the approach should be or what are the tools and what how will be able to you know implement all those things so all those ideas have a reference material you'll be able to view this video and then you know particularly implement but in order to implement you need to be having the basics and that is what i'm covering or i have covered in this particular course but that is not enough you need to be going to your computer or your laptop and then work on the software try implementing new tools which you are not aware of you know go to all those things and explore the software category and try implementing try designing or try seeing whatever you can able to see or you can able to draw or you can able to sketch or model in the software category let it be anything you know, just you know model some basic things which we already see in day-to-day -day life like tables screws and all those things you can you know, innovate yourself, you know, think in a manner where you will be able to accommodate a lot of varieties into your designing and modeling. So that is how you learn. So only by implementing or only by practicing on a software, that is the complete, appropriate, perfect way in which you will be able to become an expert in the software CATIA. So irrespective of all those things, we have covered a lot of things, right? We have covered what is CATIA. What is CATIA? CATIA is actually nothing but computer-aided three-dimensional interactive application. So, which is nothing but which is 3D modeling software with which we'll be able to model, create, and sketch our various amount of activities, right? So that is what CATIA provides us. And it's one of the most leading 3D modeling software around the globe. And it is employed in various industries as well: aerospace, automobile, and even the basic electronics items we'll be able to see, right? So in all those areas, we'll be able to implement CATIA and a lot of industries and a lot of organizations evolve or employ CATIA software in order to get all the items sorted. So we then after completely understanding on the software CATIA, then we went on to understand the graphical user interface. So how the actual software looks like. So where are the tools, where are the options, what are the workbenches we are working on and all those things regarding the appearance, the user interface, the interactivity, the navigation and all those things regarding the CATIA GUI graphical user interface we saw. And then we went on to the sketching part, 2D sketching and 3D sketching. What are the toolboxes available? What are the tools available in all the toolboxes? And how will you be able to implement? What are the things that you should be keeping in mind while implementing 2D sketching and 3D sketching? All those things, you know. And we also tried implementing sketching, right? We also implemented 2D sketching. We also implemented 3D sketching and 3D modeling as well. So what are the things that we should be keeping in mind while performing 2D and 3D sketching? Do you remember? So while performing 2D sketching, you should be making sure that you are having a planar surface. Only by having a planar surface, you will be able to create a 2D sketch. That is the one thing that you should be remembering while you are performing 2D sketching. And coming to 3D sketching or 3D modeling. So what is the thing which you need to be making sure or you need to be keeping in mind while performing 3D sketching or 3D modeling? Is that nothing but the sketch you have created should be closed. If it's not closed, if it is isolated, you will be shown a pop-up error message saying that you know it is unavailable or it is impossible for you to pad or extrude this particular sketch in order to get a 3D model. So that is the one thing that you should be remembering or you should be keeping in mind while you're performing 3D sketches or 3D modeling on the software category. Thank you for taking this course and all the very best.
If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on this video any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.